And Palesa, what's your role? So my role is um, technical evangelist for Sweka. Okay. Also um, for Sweka. Yeah, also for okay, Sweka. And yeah, I always get a lot of back about the title as well, <laughs> technical evangelist. Um, but basically, I'm the go-to guy from a technical perspective. I enter the session like an internet connection with a swagger that's too advanced for extensions. I'm testing if y'all connecting like I'm sending some packets while thinking rhyme patterns. My Jason is never so part. I'm a Maison. I can many different uses for a mason jar. Blazing bars, switching lanes like crazy cars. My rhyme time functions rule twice as hard like schizo's ass. Forget that. I keep it lit like an arsonist on Prozac. Asking volcanoes where the hot flow at. My mama proud like I gave birth to him sun catch more wrecked than how merged with earthworm gym but play it cooler than urkel's twin dropping knowledge like witcher deer the one with purple skin top of my game i'm top tier in top form top your score off the top like a top draw focus on what's relevant when i index my content like search internet hey guys beautiful morning here in south africa it's me again i finally completed part four of my timesheet solution so just to recap quickly, I did part one to three, where um, I ran you through the workflow, the form. Um, I think I had a UDA in there as well. But what I've managed to do is actually take the same solution and port it across to 365. So the tool that I used to do that was Shake 8. You guys will see the details um, as well as the log from the migration that I ran when I did this. So let's get into it. So if you look at my homepage, you'll see that I've got the same look and feel, um, similar to actually the similar look and feel to what I had on premise. So if I go ahead and I submit a weekly timesheet, what you guys will see is that I've managed to get very similar functionality working on my Nintex form, on Nintex forms for Office 365. So if you look at the form, first thing you'll see that I can still select my week ending I didn't change the data for that. And if I go out and I fill in a new timesheet, so I'm just gonna do one row over here, and then I'll add another row. You guys will see that I'm able to actually make use of my repeating section. Do bear in mind that I built this using the classic forms designer, but it's um, it was just to make sure that I've got a similar look and feel to what you guys saw in the previous post. And then just to also explain, I can, um, I've made use of some of the features um, available in Nintex forms for Office 365, which weren't previously there, such as the save and continue, where I can save uh, my form and work on it as long as the session is open, or I can also still do the save and submit. So obviously when I save and submit, my timesheet status changes from draft to submitted. And then as you can see, I've still got the same pop-up asking me, are you sure you want to submit this timesheet? And then with that, I've obviously got a Nintex workflow behind the scenes. And at this point, I've actually received an email notification telling me that my timesheet was successfully submitted. So if I quickly refresh my inbox, you see that I've gotten an email stating that my timesheet for that particular week has been received. And then with this example, I've actually set the same user as the approver for this workflow. So if I go into my second email notification, you'll see that it's going to tell me that um, I need to approve the timesheet that was submitted. And then there's a couple of things that I've put into this notification. So here you can see that with um, Nintex workflow for Office 365, you have the ability to type in comments over here and then approve that task. And then also the one thing that I've done is I've also put in my repeating section as HTML into the email as well. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to approve this. Just say something like happy with this. And I'm going to click on approved. And then you'll see that I get a notification as the um, Request or the, the person who submitted the timesheet telling me that the timesheet was approved. And so if I go into my timesheet site quickly and I refresh my page, you'll see that the um, item that I submitted has a title now, as well as the timesheet status has changed to approve. 
And then if you go ahead and we open the workflow history for this item, you guys will see that I've got a completed workflow over here called timesheet approval. And if I click on that workflow, just to see some of my logging information, you'll see that um, the tasks that are completed previously is listed over there as well as you can um, see that I've got some logs that I've put in there. So I've just put in a couple of logs. One to tell me that the workflow started, then I actually um, log every the, the, the different row items that I process in my repeating section. And if I go ahead and I actually open my timesheet reports list, you guys will see that the line items that are submitted have been passed through. So let's take a look at the workflow behind my timesheets list. So if I open the workflow for my workflow inventory, you guys will see that I've actually managed to get the same functionality as to my on-premise workflows. So I've still got my state machine over here, where I've got the initial state, the approval state of my workflow, the review should it be rejected for whatever reason as well as the, um, the step where I actually process the timesheet. So processing the timesheet, um, what that actually does is um, read my repeating section and create those separate line items. Then I've also, um, I had a state in here, which I was using for testing purposes, um, but it's not relevant to the final solution, which I've uploaded for you guys to download and deploy. So I've actually removed that state um, and ideally this is the workflow that you'll download. So everything is pretty much self-explanatory from this point. Um, I've actually done documentation on the workflow itself, um, some of the lists and libraries that I've got in there. And I've also explained some of the steps in the workflow. So you can see over here where I actually process my timesheet. I've got documentation on how to loop through the repeating section. So with that said, I hope you guys enjoy the solution. Please feel free to add any comments um, by posting below on my blog post. If you have any questions, please feel free to reach out. And I hope this helps somebody out there. Thank you.